Hello everybody, welcome to this episode of Every Rock Has a Story. I'm so happy to have you today and we're going to shake things up a little bit in this episode. We're going to shake it up because today I'm going to talk about earthquakes. Earthquakes. I wonder, have any of you ever felt an earthquake? Some of you might be living in places like California where there are sometimes earthquakes. Even places where I live here on the East Coast, sometimes we have little earthquakes. Um, the rock that I'm going to tell you about today is this one right here. This is special because it was given to me for this video by a friend named Chris. Chris lives in Australia. He collected this rock in Norway and then he sent it to me here in Boston and now I get to tell its story to you. This is a beautiful rock because it was cut and polished so we could see what's inside this rock. And you might be able to see some sort of uh, black and gray stripes like that. There's some speckles of red throughout this rock. The red is my favorite mineral, garnet. But what's interesting about this rock is that black stripe right there. And then a little bit more there and there. That long black stripe. And the name of that black stripe is very strange. We call that a pseudo-tacolite. Pseudo-tacolite. And you probably haven't heard of a pseudo-tacolite, but I'm going to tell you that the pseudo-tacolite has something to do with an earthquake. Now, growing up here in the East Coast, in Massachusetts, we don't have a lot of earthquakes. But when I went to get my PhD, the last degree that I got, after college, I went to California and I remember the first time I felt an earthquake. I was sitting in the library, which is up on the second or third floor of the Earth and Environmental Sciences building in Berkeley, California. And I was sitting there very quiet and I was studying or reading, writing something down. Everybody was very quiet because of course it's a library. And I was there and I remember feeling all of a sudden, <laughs> what was that? And it was, a, it was like a loud sound. I felt this sound and I felt a shake. And to me, I was very confused. I looked around, nobody else seemed worried, but it felt to me like a big giant truck had like backed into the, banged into the building. And that's strange. And then I thought at myself, wait a second, that might have been an earthquake. And so you know what I did? I got up and I ran downstairs because in the lobby of the building, there's an actual seismograph. A seismograph is a way to take a picture or a recording of the shaking of the earth. And there's a black pencil that shakes back and forth and there's an earthquake. And when there's no earthquake, the pencil just goes still. I ran down the stairs and ran to the seismograph and sure enough, that pencil was going back and forth and back and forth. It was an earthquake, the first one I ever really felt in my life. Well, a lot of earth scientists use rocks to study why earthquakes happen. And actually, we've talked in a few of my previous episodes about some of the things that can cause earthquakes. Well, I have another rock today, one of the biggest ones, this guy back here. This is a beautiful blue schist. This is from Jenner, California, which is just a little bit north of Berkeley, California in San Francisco, where I felt that earthquake. In subduction zones, when the ocean crust goes down below the continents and brings all that water in serpentine and in blue schist and brings it down, sometimes that water gets released. And that can fuel the volcanoes, like we talked about in episode 29. But the water, when it comes out of those rocks, can also cause earthquakes. Now, this rock, this pseudotacolite, this comes from Norway, the country of Norway. And these are rocks that went down a subduction zone deep, deep, deep 400 million years ago in an ancient subduction zone. And the water that was carried down by rocks like this was released and created earthquakes, 400 million year old earthquakes. A pseudotacolite 
is something that happens during an earthquake. It's something that is formed during an earthquake because when two plates slide by, do this right now. Take your hands and put them together and slide them by. What do you feel? Heat. Does it feel hot when you slide your hands next to each other? During a big earthquake, that friction, that sliding, makes heat. This rock had an earthquake. <clears throat> and it caused enough heat right here that it melted this rock. And that's what the black little lines are. Those are cracks. And that melt formed and then squirted into those cracks and then <clears throat> cooled off really rapidly. So this is like a glass. That's like a black glass, kind of like obsidian that you might have heard of as well. So a pseudotacolite is a direct record of an actual ancient earthquake. So seismologists that study earthquakes can study ancient pseudotacolites, records of past earthquakes, and of course we can look at the modern surface and feel those big earthquakes that can be kind of scary sometimes. I hope you liked this episode about earthquakes, about getting shaken up, and about the pseudo tacolites that preserve those records. And now for a special treat, we're gonna kick this rock over and hear from one of our viewers. I am Daniel. I am a four-year-old geologist. I live in North Carolina. I am gonna show you a rock called Rhyolite. Gray with black bands. No visible crystals. Sharp edges. 530 550 million years old. What does word say again? Extrusive. Extrusive igneous rock. Extrusive igneous rock means volcanic. This is my picture. See the black lines and the sharp edges? Ready to see a real wildlife rock? I found it at the top of Mara Mountain. I went on a hike at Mara Mountain and I hiked to the top and finally at the top I found it. Many, many years ago, people used it for weapons and tools. Wildlife is a special rock I found in my state. Maybe you'll find a special rock in your state. Daniel. You had me at, I'm a four-year-old geologist. <laughs> that was wonderful. Everything about your contribution was wonderful. Fiery volcanoes making that rhyolite in North Carolina. Great way to end this story of earthquakes and melting. We'll see you for our next episode. Bye-bye.